All right. Let's wait and see. Oh, that was uh, longer than what it said. Yep, I got there. Oh, Moise wanted a tag. Can you tag Moise, if you remember? Yeah, for sure. All right, and we're live, guys. Yep, what's up, guys? Let's see, we'll, we'll give it a minute for people to give on. Yeah, for sure. All right, let me put this here so I can see the comments. What's up, Moise? Yes. Hey, Moise, what's up? <laughs> Hope everyone's having a great evening, guys. Sorry, we're just looking over <clears throat> what's going on on card ladder and stuff. Some interesting stuff I've noticed. But we'll get to that in a second. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, just a sec. My jacket. All right, all right. I guess we can uh, we can start. Hey Maureen. hey Maureen, how's it going? How's it going, guys? Please start. What's up? What's up? When you when you when you start watching, uh, we'll have uh, we'll have to know who's uh, who's watching with us. Uh, yeah. Yeah. All right, guys. So I I, I hope you liked uh, you liked last week's show. Uh, last week was uh, was a really good one with uh, with Kiki, especially yeah. when he started showing us his uh, his collection of uh, of of just completely insane Kobe cards. <laughs> I mean, like some of those were never seen before. <laughs> those, those ones with the, like I said, the ones he showed with the, with the, with the, with the patches, with the K and the yeah. E. I think were those autos, those had auto on, they had, they were auto on the bottom yeah, as well. Yeah, right? it was, it was <clears throat> autos and patches as well. And that one with, uh, with the LeBron autograph, like yeah, behind it, it was it was just oh. for those who who missed it, uh, you can rewatch it on uh, our YouTube page on uh, yeah. on Balkan SC breaks. Uh, definitely a fun one to uh, to watch if you missed it. Um, yeah. It was cool. <laughs> so so yeah, guys. So this week uh, we're gonna again uh, talk about uh, NBA news and how they, they can affect uh, the market. Uh, yep. Hey, Franjo, what's up? Hey, Kent. What's uh, up, guys? Then we'll have a, a segment with, uh, with Steven uh, that's going to talk about um, top five cards under $20, $20 US you can invest yeah. in. And then uh, we're going to finish with, uh, with a, a segment uh, that, that was, uh, that, that was kind of started uh, uh, because of an, uh, of an idea of a question that Kent Haley had. Oh, Kent, Kent's here. He's here right now watching too. Logo. Thank you, Kent. Uh, Thanks, Kent. He just asked a question like, how can you spot like the next um, Janus of today? And um, I thought about it during the whole week uh, and I have like some, some sort of theory uh, I'd like to share with you guys and, and would love to, to have a, your input um, on it. So yeah, that's, uh, that, that's about it for, 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 for today, for today's episode. Um, anything, well, Franjo. anything else you want to add in the intro, Stephen? That's it. Uh, no, let's fill basketball break for number 45. Other than that, yeah. no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, man. Um, let's, uh, let's try to fill that one. Other to the intro, guys. Uh, but hopefully, you guys, I hope you guys enjoyed last week. Kiki, like uh, Asmer said, had a, uh, we could have probably spent hours watching his collection. Oh, yeah. um, just a great guy to talk to. Uh, great guy to even. Yeah, just a great guy and all around and great collection. Uh, but yeah, this 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 week, let's get back on track. Uh, we're gonna get back to what we usually do, and let's talk about NBA news. Yeah, a lot of trades. A lot of trades happened. Uh, a lot of trades. Uh, the NBA happened. draft. NBA draft happened. A lot of yeah. stuff happened, right? So yeah. So I yeah. One, one, one thing I wanna I wanna start with uh, today is uh, I wanna discuss the Atlanta Hawks. Uh, Hawks, uh, pretty much the team that made the most. Uh, interesting moves um, yes. this off season to me, um, especially like the 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 their, their latest signing when they they signed Bogdanovic uh, just after it didn't work with uh, um, Milwaukee. Like that was like a crazy addition for them. So basically, like they they just kind of like surrounded 
uh, Trey Young with solid veterans and, and, and like really effective young players yeah. as well. So Bogdanovich, Danilo Gallinari, who's a really good vet to have. Uh, and then Ray John Rondo, like having Ray John Rondo for Trey Young is going to be amazing. Oh, uh, it's going to, when I saw that, when I saw that trade happen, I was like, I can't believe first of all, that he left LA. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's it. Yeah. That was one thing. I was surprised they let him go uh, because he did have a great uh, NBA finals, like uh, throughout the whole Absolutely. playoffs and stuff. Oh, he right? was a great player for them. Yeah. And um but yeah, but to go to Atlanta with uh, under Tra- to have Trey Young, uh, to have, sorry, uh, Rajon Rondo to have Trey Young under his wing, it's going to be incredible. It's man. amazing because Trey, Trey, Trey isn't a, a, a good defensive player at all, for sure. Um, I don't think he can become one um, at any point in his career, but just having uh, um, a mentor right, like Rondo, at least he's going to learn how to position himself maybe on the floor a bit better. Yeah. Uh, and, and just not to be like a liability. Um, exactly. That, that's yeah. all he needs. That's all he needs, pretty much. So that, that's an excellent sign for them. Uh, and I love the, the the guy they drafted as well, Okongwu. Um, yep. Uh, big guy. Uh, the the drafted uh, who's going to play behind Capella and Capella again, like really good mentor. Oh, for he's it. solid. I like that kid. So like honestly, like mix of uh, uh, vets, mix of younger players, mix of big men, perimeter perimeter defender. The shooters, uh, just a solid team uh, overall. I really love what you did this offseason. I, I was surprised. Uh, like I said, we all thought Bogdanovich was going to go to Milwaukee, right? And uh, yeah. that, and like I like I told you what we were talking earlier, and I mentioned, uh, I noticed that Giannis me- mentioned that uh, if Bogdanovich had gone to Milwaukee, that that was like he was looking forward to that if that oh, yeah. Bogdanovich yeah. was coming uh, because he knows he can fight in the playoffs right he's one of those guys that can that, that can put up a fight and Giannis likes those type of guys so now I think I don't know we'll see what happens there but uh Bogdanovich going that yeah I like I like the way Atlanta looks now it's it's mm-hmm. it's gonna be a good it's gonna be a good it's gonna be a good uh good season I'm like yeah but this is gonna trades. have ripples on the whole league like you said like for for Milwaukee just like the way they botched this signing of this signing yeah. trade, whatever they wanted to do uh I mean like uh Giannis needed shooters around him uh, mm-hmm. one for one to be able to have any sort of success in the playoffs because like whenever he plays against a, a, a solid defensive team in the playoffs uh, what they do is they build a wall they just do the Giannis wall and yep. that's it like he, he cannot do anything if he if he and especially if he doesn't have anyone to kick the ball to outside it's, it's over for him right yeah it's over for the team so that's why this uh, uh, transaction to get Bogdano which was was so crucial for them they botched it now, not only does it make another team in the A East quite good for, for the years to come, but only kind of like affect uh, as well, it, it kind of like affects Janice's decision uh, for next year. So like, is he really going to stay uh, in a team that wasn't able to uh, um, surround him with the best possible lineup uh, they can? Um, yeah. So yeah, that's going to be a, a, a tough Yeah, it, it's going to be, it's going to be interesting. It's going to be interesting what happens because um like he, he still has a whole year right to decide pretty much yeah. right or, or no not year um december he has a, until december 21st right before the season yeah starts. yeah so i think he's yeah. going to resign regardless because i don't think he's going anywhere this year right now no well not not no. this year that's for sure but like the, the thing is uh is he going to sign the extension for the next well the extension years, that you know? that yeah. i don't think he will either right yeah. now unless if they i don't know that's a tough comment. I don't want to answer that. <laughs> yeah, answer my, my, that. my money is on him leaving for some reason. Because he, like everyone says he's going to stay. I don't know, man. I see him, honestly, like, I see him either going to the Raptors. I think Raptors make, make so much sense for Janice right now. Uh, or the Heat. Like the best team for him would be the Heat. But um, I don't think we're going to know about it until next year. That's for sure. He's um, like at least like going to wait and see like, to see like how it goes. But um. But yeah, it's going to be interesting here for, for Janice, that's for sure. Um, moving on quickly, just like over the, the, the other NBA news, um, Gordon Hayward's crazy, stupid contract. He signed <laughs> uh, $120 million over four years, which is around $30 mil, uh, a year. It's insane for a guy like that. I mean, he's not bad. Um, last season, I think he... I'd averaged- sign it. <laughs> you, you would sign it uh last season regular season last season he averaged 17.5 points 
uh, 6.7 rebounds and four assists, which isn't bad, especially no. in a team like that, like Boston, where you have uh, Tatum and, and Brown, who, who take a lot of shots and, and Walker. Yeah. Um, but um, it isn't, it isn't uh, 30 million a, w- a year stats to me, at least. I- I'm really like questioning uh, MJ's, uh, Michael Jordan's uh, decision making on that one, that's for sure. Uh, to Charlotte, <clears throat> I don't know. I'm, um, I think I'm not, I'm not disputing that he wanted to get, uh, to get him on the team. I think he's a great player, but uh, for that amount of money, I don't think he's worth that amount of money. No, no, that's yeah, that's... The, the, like, I'm not saying he's a bad player. He's a good player. Uh, but like Charlotte, Charlotte's going to look dangerous coming up yeah. right now too. I like Charlotte too. Not I even, like I, don't, too, yeah. I, I don't even think LaMelo going to start. <laughs> Oh, you don't think so? Um, no. Well, the, the I don't just... think he would fit. I don't think he would fit. I don't think he would start uh, right away. I it, wouldn't. It's hard. He's I a hard fit for, for any team, like I said last week. But uh, I think they have to um, they have to play him just because he's showtime and like people are gonna want to see him. Like, there's no Zion this year. Expect, expect maybe like Obi Toppin. He's gonna be like showtime and highlights and stuff. Yeah. But um, Lamelo is gonna be the highlight guy this, this year. That's for sure. Um, mm. Franio, Franio, that's exactly what I was saying. Uh, uh, to a friend earlier, uh, I think that Jordan lost a bet as well, and like that was the that was the consequence, and like he had to sign fucking Jordan Hayward to thirty million a year. Jordan, that would that would be hilarious actually if that was like something. Along those lines. Who knows, man? He probably Who lost knows? one of those golf courses down there in North That's Carolina it. somewhere. Uh, next up, uh, Raptors. Uh, Raptors losing Ibaka to yeah. the Clippers and and Gasol uh, to the Lakers. Um, well, first of all. Uh, Ibaka going to the Clippers, I think it makes just total sense. Again, I was mentioning last week that um, uh, in the West, you need to have um, a guy that can compete with Anthony, Anthony Davis. Yeah. Uh, if, if you're you're expecting... But can he? Can he really? Well, he, he, he obviously isn't as good in defense uh, as, as he, he was. Be. Yeah. Uh, he's still okay. He's a decent defender. Uh, he's uh, he's good at offensively though, like because he used to come make... up. Was off, sorry to cut you off, but he uh, when he sure. played with the Raptors, he came off the bench, right? Raf- um, Raptors always had like some some weird lineups, like they always yeah. had change the lineup. So yeah, because um, I, I, I remember him coming off the bench a lot for the Raptors. Yeah, yeah, but he he, he can still be a starter, that's for sure. Uh, yeah. He can still compete, but I think it, it makes sense for the Clippers to have a guy like that. Especially yeah, well, they just lost them, and they just lost Mont- Montrose Harrell too, right? Yeah, I think. Them, I think, uh, I think Ibaka is better than, than Montrez. It's hard to see because Montrez is like this, like he's up and down. Like it's hard. Yeah, to he just had a great season, so he won six man awards. So you got to give him that, right? So yeah, but he was shit in the playoffs. Like he was averaging what, like seven points and like three boards. It's insane. Yeah, so it, he's like real up and down. I don't know. I feel like Ibaka I think I think the best. Clippers wasn't a good fit for him. I th- I think Maybe. him going to LA is a good better fit for him. Yeah, but uh, Ibaka going to Clippers. Let's see what happens with that. Um, yeah. Gasol, that was a. I like. I like. I like him going. I like. I, I'm sad to see him go. I liked him as a player, mm-hmm. um, but where he's going is good. He's he's gonna. Be no, I think too so good. too. And what yeah. I think, because like when when you look at what what the Raptors were, were doing this off season, so what happened? They signed Van Vliet. That was uh, pretty much obvious. Uh, yeah. Like you need to sign that guy. You need a a, a guy to to. Uh, uh, to be your, your your lead player once Laurie is done, so that was an obvious one. Um, yeah. And the other signings they did, I, th- I think they, they signed Bembry, the guy from the Hawks, um, and that's pretty much it. Like nothing major happened for the Raptors. Yeah, other, and other than the draft as well that we talked about. And the draft, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. so what I nothing what I'm crazy. seeing. What I'm seeing there's still here, a lot of time. There's still a lot of time to make some time. moves, right? Yeah, but for sure. And you still have a trade deadline as well. And uh, like most of those like more serious teams, they like to uh, keep their pieces in place until the, the draft deadline, uh, not the draft deadline, but the, the, the trade deadline and, and make major moves um, when they get there. But um, yeah. I, feel like, I feel like Raptors are kind of betting on, um, not betting, but like maybe being a bit more confident about signing Giannis uh, next year. Or planning Do you really on... think he's going to come to Toronto? Is everyone really I, thinking that? I think so. Holy I don't know, man. Cow. I really don't. So that's why, like, everyone. So, ever... Sorry, sorry. All right, let, let me th- let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Okay. Um, I think Miami's the better option, and I think Miami will be the better signing. Miami's the honest. better option. Miami's the better option for for yeah. sure. But but Giannis is a loyal guy, all right. 
So yes. my, my the, like the two options I see for Janis that are the most realistic in terms of him being a loyal guy is yeah. staying in Milwaukee or going to the Raptors. And why would he be loyal to the Raptors? Because Masai Ujiri brought his whole family um, here uh, uh, in North America. Yeah. So like he has a relationship with the guy. Like he has a personal relationship with yeah. Masai. So there's that. Like he, if there's anyone he owes something other than Milwaukee, would be Masai, right? Yeah. So, so that's like the only thing I'm saying. But in, in all honesty, like, like I would like him for, I would like him to stay in Milwaukee, and and make Milwaukee win something for crying out loud. Like, you it know would what be I mean? amazing. Like, but honestly, like that's like, it what I really want to see. I really want to see yeah. the underdog team finally win something. With, of course, he is an all star superstar. Uh, Giannis, right? So, like, yeah. I would like to, I would like to see him, and and he just, I just think he needs one more person that is almost like, almost up there like a superstar, yeah. Which he doesn't have on their team. Yeah, we can yeah, all admit. Uh, that. Uh, oh, man, oh, hold yeah, on, we got a lot of questions done. coming in. Hey, Channing. what's up, Channing? Uh, you missed. We we just talked about uh, uh, just a couple of NBA news. News. For, so we talked about the Hawks. Uh, Gordon Hayward's crazy contract, and we we're talking about the uh, the Raptors uh, right now. What uh, what they're doing uh, this off season, and planning to do next next year. Yeah. Uh, the Greek will be in a Bulls jersey. Uh, wow, that's uh, that's that's a tough one. I don't think so. <laughs> um, I know I know he's a huge fan of Jordan, but but who isn't? He'd uh, go to Dallas before he go to Chicago. <laughs> yeah, but then again, Dallas, like Dallas, it's just because because of the cap space. That's the only reason yeah. why I keep mentioning that. And, that Dallas and, makes sense, but uh, but uh, he, right, tell uh, us. But who's the leader? Like, what, if you if if Giannis and, and and Luca are playing together, who's the the top guy? Who's the main guy? You, you, it has to be Luca, right? It has to be Luca. I wouldn't. So so the, the, it has does, to be Luca. does Giannis want to be uh like the second guy? Up, right i don't know um sorry uh, kent brings up a good question um yeah. kent so honest question if Giannis goes to the raptors does that hurt his card value obviously in canada well gush but while well, demand go lower being on a canadian team um i don't think so like maybe like that's a good question that, well let's think of, let's look at Kawhi leonard Right. Uh, let's look at some of his cards. Um, I have some of his cards, just not on me on right here. Like, okay, why, um, why Raptors cards like uh, fetch a lot of money uh, nowadays? Um, I, I don't. The know reason that. why the reason why Kawhi Leonard, I, I I read this a while ago. Uh, his his Raptors cards catch a lot of money right now is because uh, he's only a one time show kind of thing with the Raptors. One he played one season and that's it. Won a championship Maybe. in and out. Yeah. So uh, I uh, I know some investors that are talking about collecting just Raptor logo Kawhi Leonard, like with his Raptor jersey yeah, on, yeah, sorry, with the Raptor too. jersey. Yeah. Um, like that's so a couple months ago, I I have a little bundle, nothing crazy, uh, just some base cards, some inserts. But those guys would be would be like mostly Canadians though. Like what what he's saying is that would would would, would like the rest of the the world be interested in collecting Janice cards. I think they would. I think they would, honestly. Because, like, if you look at uh, the Raptors uh, market, per se, like, it, it, it just has been growing constantly. Like, every single yeah. year, if they get more attention, uh, uh, better players, obviously, more more success, obviously, with the championship as well. But, like, they're, they're a serious team now. They have, like, a serious coaching staff, a serious organization. Yeah. This exactly. isn't the Raptors of old days, that's for sure. Yeah, and but he it wouldn't bring his card value down though because if he continues to play the way he is, the same collectors who are have oh, yeah. those same cards, they're going to continue following him, right? Oh yeah, that's just how it sure. is. For sure, and I think so, like always like, a change of scenery is always like good for a player. Um, oh yeah, especially at that at that caliber, it just like keeps things moving. I guess I don't know. I I, I think personally that it would uh, it wouldn't hurt his value. That's for sure. No. Um. All right, let's keep going, buddy. Yeah, uh, well, and I think everyone is understanding the Warriors for next year. Um, that hey, well, yeah, welcome, that's for Ken. sure. But but now with Clay being out for a year, oh yeah, <clears throat> and that's like a big his, thing. His replacement is who is uh, uh, the guy uh, Nico Minion, the redhead guy from, from the draft, and then I don't uh, yes, Ke- yes Kelly Oubre. So so yeah. that's about it. I don't know. I, I'm really 
looking forward to see them play to see like how Steph it, is doing. Uh, how Steph is going to lead a team. Actually, that's a big thing, right? This is going to be the first yeah. time he's going to be by himself. Uh, no AD, no Clay Thompson, like you said. He's still got right. Draymond Green. Uh, he's got Andrew Wiggins. Uh, who, and you just said you just said the guy's name. They just added from um, Ubre can play. Yeah, well, Ubre, yeah, yeah Ubre is not bad. Like, I he, he's going to be okay with uh, with the Warriors, but um, he isn't Clay. Like he's in a threat. Like Clay is a threat as soon as he touches the ball. As soon as he's fucking yeah. running threat basically i watched him play in toronto where he hit one of those like crazy pointers like remember he scored like <laughs> three how many how many points and yeah, i was man. like i had to leave the stadium man i was like I, we're, we're losing by 30 or 40 points by half and i'm like i, I go to my body <laughs> let's get out of here <laughs> uh, franio is asking uh what do we think about portland's moves i love Por the portland uh what, what they did this uh this off season uh, let me just pull out uh, their uh, roster. Yeah, if you don't remind me what they did. Just a second. Uh, roster. Um, they got Robert Covington. That's for sure. That's a good, that was yep. a good pickup for them. I just open. I want to see what else they got. He brought back Camel Anthony, which is really good too. Like, I really love the way he played. The yeah. He, he did good coming off the bench for them in the playoffs as well. Yeah, for sure. Uh, okay, just a second. Uh, da, da, da. Harry Giles, that's it. That's that, I was big on that guy last year. He was the big man from uh, uh, the Kings. Uh, plays a center, 6'11", 240 pounds from Duke. Uh, young guy as well. I think it's like his fourth year, third year maybe. He's not with mm -hmm. the Blazers as well. He's going to be really good. They they kind of like switched. Um, what's his name? Um, Seth Curry for uh, Derek Jones. So you get like a yep. bigger wing who's a better defender, but he who can still shoot the ball. That was a really good move as well. And uh, pretty much kept the, the rest of the team intact. So that's that's really good, solid moves for them. So yep. props to uh, props to uh, uh, Blazers for that. That's for sure. Yeah, those are good moves there, actually. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, let me just like see the... They lost Whiteside. Man, Whiteside is trash. Yeah. So, like, I... I he he was he, he seemed he wasn't always uh putting in the same effort best to with defender i don't know i don't know man he was he was Ooh. he was good like a couple of years ago but like this past couple of years two years maybe like he wasn't he wasn't himself i don't know maybe maybe he's gonna bounce back at some point i i did love him uh back when he was in miami but uh yeah uh, he was, was good in miami yeah that was it um, okay, moving on, guys. Uh, we can get yeah. back to these uh, uh, questions if you want a bit later on, but I, we have like a couple of things we want to we cover uh, right now. Um, so Steven is going to talk to you guys about uh, the top cards uh, you should top be five. In. Top five cards under $20 US you should be investing in right now. Um, yeah. Feel free to have some uh, cards you uh, spotted as well that you need want us to talk about. So uh, go ahead, uh, Steven. All right. Thanks, Asmir. Uh, all right, guys. Uh, so as we know, I try to do this once a week. We do the top five cards that I think are my favorite to pick under $20 US. Uh, this is all going by card ladder, as we always do. Guys, don't forget, uh, join, sign, sign up for card ladder. Uh, we will post maybe the link if you can, yeah. Asmir, yeah, uh, in, the, in the comments if you guys are interested. For sure. So I'm going to start off with my number one pick just because I have to, and, I'm, and I was talking to Asmir just before we got, got became, went live, uh, is Donovan Mitchell Optic Base. Uh, his rookie card is 19 US dollars. Crazy. And Buy those. I, can't, I, I can't believe that card is so low. Uh, this is raw, guys. It's not graded. Uh, this is just Optic rated rookie. 19 US dollars. Last sold. Uh, it, it's been on an up and down market the highest it went was uh, about 26 dollars. so uh it's gonna go way higher than that once the season starts it has to yeah. uh donovan mitchell is a phenomenal player we're not talking about anyone i'm not mentioning guys this is not a rookie i'm talking about this is someone we all know who can play the game very well uh another card guys is uh luka Doncic. uh his optic base second year rookie uh, has actually gone up quite a bit. Uh, it's still a cheap card. Uh, it last sold for seven US dollars, which is not in, inexpensive, but it has gone up uh, from about two weeks ago. 
uh, on the 23rd, sorry, it sold for 475 and now it's at, like I said, $7. And according to the chart, it looks like it's just supposed to skyrocket. Uh, not skyrocket, but go higher. Yeah. <laughs> Um, that's but what, just, that's uh, sorry, sorry, because you have, I just posted the link in the comments, guys, if you want to uh, have a look again, uh, we, we're trying to promote this to you guys because we think this is like pretty much the best tool. Um, if you want to kind of like follow the trends of, of what cards are uh, uh, going to have uh, interesting value in your future uh, and, and how your investments are going. Uh, so you just click on, on that link and you get a, a free seven day trial to try out this, uh, uh, this app uh, we uh, both Steven and I are using. Uh, yeah. voila. Sorry, I'm just trying to find that card. I was talking to Azri for now. I can't find it. I don't know why. Um, it was uh, what's his face? Hold on, just give me one second, guys. Uh, we were just talking about him. Uh, let me please. Uh, oh, sorry. Give me, give me a, a what position does he play? Jimmy Butler. Jimmy Butler. Oh, Jimmy. Oh, yeah. Jimmy Butler. Twenty twelve hoops. I think he said. Yeah, guys. Yeah. Jimmy Butler. 2012 hoops rookie card right uh is going for last sold for 17 dollars and 60 cents uh crazy. us um i can't believe i saw this guys uh um, you know what that i think the reason behind that is like i mentioned uh it's older, gone up it's it's got sorry to cut you off as here but it's yeah. gone up from nine dollars us now it's reached 17 so in the last two yeah. weeks so but the good luck find it uh, good, good luck, like finding one that's in mint condition, though, because like those older hoops cards are are fragile. I, I ripped yeah. a pack of twenty twelve actually recently, uh, mm -hmm. and and it's just like uh, man, it, it isn't like the same thing as 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 this year's. As this year's, yeah. Uh, uh, but whatever. This is this is Jimmy Butler raw base. So if you guys can find it, like I said, uh, I would be buying it at that price. Uh, yeah. That's another card. So that's my number three. Excuse me, guys. I'm just trying to drink you some beer, so <laughs> the burps are coming up. Um, and guys, I this is one I like because the price. Um, it's the cheapest one. Uh, one, it's one of the cheapest. It's probably the cheapest one I'm going to mention today. Is uh, Kendrick Nunn? Uh, his clearly Don Ross raw is 99 cents right now U.S. Uh, I don't know. I like him. And for some reason it was at 12 and it dropped down to this now. I really so, don't. So he's, a, he's an interesting guy to, 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 uh, I like him. This is, like I said, I'm giving yeah. you guys my opinions. Yeah. I like him. Uh, like I said, this is something, this is not a guy who will blow up. Uh, but he might but actually, he, cause like he was, he might he, have those games where he might have, let's say five, maybe 10 games in a row that are good. Yeah. Right. There's a possibility. Right. Maybe more. I don't know. I could be wrong. But, but he was in the discussion for he was in the discussion for Rooker of the Year uh, this past year. Like he was, uh, he yeah, was that's John right. Rand, Zion and him right after because like he, he had a tremendous season. He just wasn't good uh, in the playoffs. I don't know what happened in the bubble for him. But, yeah. Uh, he I think well, was it was a, a rookie, right? It was it's him being yeah. a rookie. That's all. Um, Probably, yeah. So I, I think I think I think um, I think. Even if it goes up to twelve dollars, you made your money, right? <laughs> like if you buy ten yeah. of them, and you, you know it's a twelve dollars, you made a hundred something dollars. Absolutely, uh, no, he's a he's a good investment. I'm, I'm personally like I'm I'm holding uh, his. I have a bunch of Kendrick Nunn cards. I'm just like keeping them. Yeah, um, and I want to mention the last card, uh, just because. Uh, there's so many. There's so many good ones as well. Like, That's all right. Hard. Go go ahead, man. We have time. Uh, okay. So we're going to go back. I'm going to, I think I mentioned this last week. Uh, Tyler Hero, his Optic Raw is still going for $10 and 33 cents right now. Mm -hmm. uh, like that's like, I don't understand. And even his Select as well for $19 and 35 cents. Um, usually to me, in my opinion, it goes Prism. Select and Optic are like neck and neck. Everyone has yeah. their opinions on those two. Yeah. Um, and then, of course, other than Prism, you have, of course, not National Treasures and all those guys. What do you cards, think? Right? What do you think is going to happen with Mosaic? Because, like, obviously, uh, um, I don't see a lot of people people like seriously investing in Mosaic. Like, uh, of course, like a lot of people are buying those like mega boxes and blasters and stuff that was on the. To be honest recently. with you, Mosaic last year. Okay, I'm not talking. Uh, I'm talking eighteen, nineteen. Okay. Okay. 
18, 19, um, even, even seventh, like I, Mosaic last year, I don't know. I never really, it wasn't big for us. You know what I so, mean? So last year, I think 20... it became this year, this year, like 1920 became very big. Well, but last year it wasn't because this year, this year it was a standalone product, right? Because la last year it was part of, of, of Prism. It, it was like a set within uh, uh, the Prism set last year and the year before. So yeah. Like some sort of like insert pretty much. But this year it's a standalone product. So it's like, it's like Panini Mosaic. Are you sure? It was, yeah, are you sure? 100%. Yeah. This year was first year. Because I Prism. opened, like I said, I've opened up Prism boxes 18, 19 before and I never got a Mosaic in any of those. No, but you had like, uh, so you had like maybe Prism. it was in the blasters or something no no you had like prison choice or like prison something else and then you had oh. prison mosaic. it was like separate product but it wasn't like a it's kind of like obsidian it's kind of like what they did with obsidian as well pretty much exactly yeah because so, obsidian was part of chronicles in 1819 right and there now you go. it's not so okay, it isn't my bad. it isn't uh maybe that's why it, it isn't prison mosaic anymore it's just mosaic right so it's, it's like a product on its own so so I, I don't know. I, I feel like uh, I don't like some people are saying it's it's like a cheaper version of, of Prism. Uh, um, quality control isn't isn't amazing on it, especially in like the silver cards. You always have like some some weird like scratches or something on on the cards. Um, uh -huh. the thing is, uh, it's still a, a well designed product, which is important, and it's its first year. So I feel like maybe not this year or next, but in like maybe like three, four years, this is going to be something important. Like this is going to be uh, worth more than, than the, well, obviously worth more than now, but it, people are going to uh, uh, be more interested in that probo product in a couple of years than they are now, I think. Yeah. Um, see me, like I, I don't mind Mosaic. I'm not, uh, I prefer, I prefer optic and select over Mosaic. For sure. For sure. That's, That's my for sure. opinion. That's my opinion. And, mm. um, but some people make it saying like the mosaic supposed to be the second prism. Right. But, mm. uh, I've heard that as well before. And, uh, uh I don't know, and, man. And, and Kent is right. He's saying for a first year card, it's gotten a lot of respect, uh, uh, respect out of the gate, uh, to prism and optic a few years to catch on to. That's exactly it. So what I'm saying. So like, uh, obviously, uh, uh, whenever a new product comes out, yep. it, it's always hard to kind of like, get in that wave and like be like really uh, um serious about investing in it but like, well yeah like he said it's, it's exactly like prism when prism came out right uh so yeah. now everyone wants lebron's first year prism like yeah. that's still a hot card right if you get a i don't even know how much that card goes for but uh it's a pretty valuable card right yeah um yeah. so just it, it could add value if 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 it, if if people continue to buy it and like it it's gonna if it, and if it's in demand it's going to be there, right? It's going to yeah. go up in value. That's just, that's just how it is. Uh-huh, for sure. Um, but yeah, and I think, like I said, my, I just want to mention one more card. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Um, was my boy, where did it go? I just had it right here. Luca. What is Luca, it? Not, not that boy, another Luca. Another Luca. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, Luca Shamanich. From the Lakers, uh, from the Lakers, from the Spurs guys, sorry. Um, his clearly authentic, his clearly Don, Don Ross base raw is going for $2.08 uh, US right now. Yeah. Uh, I think his car, he's a guy hard to pick. He looks really good, yeah. but he didn't play much last year. Uh huh. Um, I, I need to see more. I need to see more. That's more. my thing too. Yeah. Um, but I, I have my investments already on him. I'm not buying him anymore. But like I said, if you want to spend twenty dollars or something, <laughs> you know what I mean, and take oh, a little no, chance sure, sure. on somebody, yeah. why not? Right? Like these. I'm talking. This, this is this is a little bit of a long shot. Mm -hmm. But the other ones, my top four, I like those ones. Donovan Mitchell. Uh, the uh, Mitchell Mitchell optic is crazy. Donovan Mitchell the, optic uh, under twenty. That's amazing. Yeah, like. It might be a little bit more. Like I talked to a guy on eBay. There's one guy on eBay. He's selling like, um, he's you know the red, the red white. Uh, what do they have? Uh, the red, yellow, and blue. I think it is oh, red, yellow, yeah, and blue. Yeah. Uh, optics. Right. He has like one of those and like twelve base ones. He has them on bid, but he's from like Vancouver. I've been messaging right. him on thing. <laughs> Who was that first? Fourth? Oh, uh, Tyler Hero, Franjo. Yeah. Tyler Hero, uh, his select card and 
what was the other card I mentioned? His select Hero's card. Hero kind of slept on. Like I don't, I don't understand that. Like he was, he was. It seems like so... everyone on Miami is slept on. Yeah, but yeah, like they, there's like a like a bunch of prices have gone down. Like it's 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 just insane. Uh, yeah, Jimmy Butler, Plug uh, Ball Gutty, Jimmy Butler. Yeah, oh, Jimmy I, Butler, that was the other. Oops, I just I just did a trade. I, I love to do trades with with guys overseas. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, I, I discussed that with you uh, before, but um, uh, I, I kind of notice that uh, European guys that are like in France or in the UK, or whatever, they're like real collectors. Like they're just like looking for certain types of cars, and they don't care. They don't care about value that much. Yeah. No. Right, so I just did a trade with a guy. Uh, it's a 2014 Giannis Select. Mm -hmm. uh, it's like the, the the blue and silver version. So it's like grease colors. Uh, mm -hmm. I'll show you a picture. But it's a, okay. it's, it's a second year Giannis, right? It's, it should be worth interesting money. And it, it was worth like around like 250 US dollars like this summer. Mm. Uh, it dropped to 50. Now it's worth like 50 US. Oh, wow. So, uh, so I traded for like, like just like cheaper-ish cards. Yeah, the guy was just like, yeah, okay, whatever. Like, I don't, I don't care. But me, I'm like, just like, yo, this is a, this is a crazy yeah. Nice car. But um, yeah. yeah, like a bunch of cars have just dropped down in price. And uh, yeah, what do you, what do you think of like, uh, now talking about Donovan Mitchell? Uh, yeah. Um, what do you think about his like second year cards? Like his select. I have a couple. Or, yeah, I have a couple actually. Uh, I, I know, but what do you think of that as an investment? I'm, uh, I'm on. I was thinking about that today when we're when I was looking yeah. at my top five. So, I was look because I have some of the second year as well. I think yeah. I think it might not be a bad thing to hold on to if you no. have them. If you if you want to invest in second year cards, uh, I'd say go for uh, numbered for like low numbered cards, uh, or obviously like auto autos or patch autos if you get, can get them. But like low number cards, like under ninety nine, um, it's a good investment because like what, what's going to happen? Same thing with with Janice, right? Like his rookie card is going to go for like crazy amounts and like yeah players guys who still uh, uh who like him but cannot invest uh, uh thousands of dollars in his rookie cards and are going to look at the the second year uh, so obviously second year cards have, have great value uh, as well yeah uh, so players who have that potential of course so uh, uh lebron uh luca definitely uh mm -hmm. mitchell tatum uh and i don't know like yeah, tatum too for example, I don't think they're quite there yet in terms of like value for your second year cards. Yeah. Uh, but it's a good thing because like you can, um, uh, it's a good moment to invest, to invest in those. That's for sure. Yeah. I, I, I think, especially like a player like that, I think it would be a good, like even like I have some of their like base select cards, nothing right. crazy, right? Uh, just like whatever. And even Jason Tatum second year select cards base. Um, certain guys, their base cards are worth money too in second year yeah, as well. Get, right? get, the, get the silvers, get the... No, 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 of uh, course, of course. Yeah. Uh, but um, the affordable ones, of course, are the base, right? Like yeah. even like, yeah. like if you grade one of these Optic Doncic uh, right now and you get a PSA 10, it's a $200 card. There you go, yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Like you're buying it for $7. Oh, and, you're absolutely right. You're absolutely and right. you're yeah. making 200 Like um, it's a no-brainer. <laughs> All right, let's Danny, get back to some basketball. Danny's asking, how y'all feeling about Raptors playing Tampa Bay? Uh, man, <clears throat> we the South. Uh, it's <laughs> it, it's, it's going to be interesting to see. Uh, I think, like, Raptors had an advantage in, in playing in Canada. Uh, just I think they'll be of, fine. I think they'll enjoy They'll be it. fine. They'll be fine. Yeah. But, like, you, you had this kind of, uh, uh, um, like, people had to... Uh, go to a different country to play you, right? So you go to yeah. a different country. You're in Canada. You're in Toronto. It's like it's a, it's a whole different beast. You're not in the US yeah. anymore. So like, there's that when you're playing the Raptors on their home court. You don't have that anymore. Uh, so so it's uh, it's gonna be quite different. But but I trust the Raptors. I mean, I mean like they're good. I, I think uh, they'll be know. fine. I think yeah, I think being in a warm climate, I think they'll be perfectly fine. Oh, yeah. I think anyone would be fine in Tampa Bay right now. <laughs> anyone? Oh yeah, yeah. Um, Moving on, if you're you're done with your uh, cards, yeah, I got I got 20, all my yeah. cards, man. All right, yeah. Um, okay, so so this is um, I'm gonna try to do this as short as possible because uh, uh, um, I've scribbled a bunch of stuff for like a, a couple of pages. Um, mm -hmm. So so let's just start at the beginning. Uh, Kent uh, asked us a, a really cool question a couple of year, a week, weeks ago. Uh, he was asking pretty much like who's the next Janice, and by that he meant um, that Janice, like his first year, he was averaging I don't remember how much, but it was like 
six points a game or something like that. But he was yeah, like something the, minimal. Yeah. Yeah. Like, uh, not, not a high scoring guy, not, a, not, not taking a lot of rebounds, obviously not a, not a great defender neither. Uh, uh, but like every single year he progressed and like third year, like fourth year drastically changed all of his numbers. So pretty much, uh, um, Kent's question was, um, who, well, how, how do you manage to, to spot those guys? How, how do you, how, yeah. how, what are the, the signs to, to kind of like see a guy like that before he becomes that? Um, so obviously it's, it's, it's a hard question. Like there's no one I see right now that, that fits within like that kind of like mold or that, that has those signs that Janice had. Cause like, it's really specific. It's really uh, a particular, like it's hard to find those guys. So, yeah. so I kind of like aimed uh, um, my, my question to someone else. I was like looking at what was the, what was the context that created Janice basically, right? So, so what's the uh, environment he, he, was, uh, uh, he, was, uh, he was in when he started playing? What was the league like? And how did he became the player that he is now? So that led me to um, a theory that I call the ecosystem theory. <laughs> so mm -hmm. follow me, guys. Uh, ask questions if you have some. Uh, and feel free to comment uh, your thoughts. Um, so how I see the NBA pretty much is that you always have some sort of uh, ecosystem, right? So what's an ecosystem? It's uh, by definition, it's a biological community of interacting organisms and their physical um, environment. So it's how uh, um, organisms interact with their environment, pretty much. So that's how, that's like how players will interact within their uh, within the league, pretty much. That's that's how I see it. Um, yeah. So I, I kind of like built some sort of like timeline of of how of how we got to Giannis and to to a player like him. Um, and I think it can go back as far as uh, Kobe Bryant's era, right? So the the when when Kobe was uh, was playing in, in the peak of of his career, um, and and he was obviously influencing a lot of things when he was playing. So he was playing in an era where he, where you had players who had like similar uh, playing types uh, as him. So you had. Uh, obviously, Kobe. You had Tracy McGrady. You had Vince Carter. So you had those wing players, shooting guards that were super athletic, uh, could score from the three pointer, could score mid mid range as well, uh, good down low too. So what that has created is uh, a need for uh, super agile uh, wing defenders, right? Yeah. So you needed to have players like Shane Battier, uh, like just like solid. Uh, yeah. three and D guys would stop those wing players, right? Another thing uh, that was happening a bit before maybe Kobe uh, uh, was uh, the era that Shaq was in. So you had those those those, um, those, those big men. It was like the big men era, pretty much with with yeah. Shaq. Uh, uh, well, Patrick Ewing a bit before, but you had look at those big guys that could work down low. And and what that has created was uh, um, the the kind of uh, uh, big men that can shoot, right? Because mm -hmm. people were starting to uh, have those guys in their teams because you needed to take Shaq out of the paint, right? So yeah. you a guy, um, a big man that can shoot the three-pointer, so you need to take Shaq out a bit so he cannot stay in, in, in the, uh, near the basket and defend. So each kind of like era would create its own way of, uh, it's, not, it's not like type of player that kind of like contradict what's, what's going on, right? So, so Kobe created those, those agile wing defenders and Shaq would have created those tall shooters like Porzingis, yeah. for example. Now you, go, you get to Giannis, right? So he's a, uh, uh, obviously a, a, a freak of nature. Like he's a, he's a guy that doesn't fit any single mold, but he's some sort of like, power forward that's too fast and too strong for those uh big shoot th th those shooting bigs yeah and 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 he's too uh uh big and quick for those uh wing defenders that were kind of like created for Kobe Bryant and Vince Carter and Tracy McGrady so that whole ecosystem that he was brought up into like no one could defend him pretty much so that's kind of like how I see it like you look at the era that Giannis came into himself pretty much became the player who he is uh he was just like he he just fell between cracks pretty much that's how i kind of like see it he was 
no one was able to defend him. So he was like the, the, the perfect archetype of player that what the league has become, like they couldn't deal with that type of player. Yeah. So, so uh, um, I think Luka Doncic is a great example of that as well. Players like Luka and, and Harden are a, um, a result of um, the league, uh, what has become after LeBron James pretty much. Because like when LeBron James was like uh, at the peak of his, of his career, uh, we would see a lot of super athletic uh, uh, players, like players that can get to the rim easily, just mm-hmm. like athletic free freaks who can dunk every single bucket pretty much. Uh, and Luca and Harden are the total opposite of that. They're just like craftiness and, 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 and playmaking and, and technique. Uh, mm-hmm. And those guys would have trouble dealing with that type of player. So it's always like the way to, to, to I think, have success, you need to go kind of like go against the, the, the trends. Um, Kent is saying, uh, Bam and Freddie V have taken those, la- uh, those leaps. I'm thinking more like who isn't sending out yet to the level that could explode. Think past two season Jazz and it's really, okay. Um, it's hard to say. Well, that, that kind of like leads me to, to how to kind of like spot those guys. So um, I, 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 obviously like the guys who are going to take those, uh, those steps are the ones that are going to be like working more than the others. Uh, that, that's like one thing, but that's like, that's an easy yeah. argument to make. I think uh, the context has a lot to do with it as well. My guess personally would be, uh, would be this. Uh, I think that we're, we're in an era right now that um, everyone is kind of building their team around having um, players that can defend multiple positions. Uh, and we've seen it in the draft as well this year, uh, uh, like you need to have those guys who can defend positions from one to five. Um, the way I see it, though, is that there's one position that's really, really hard to defend if you're a wing or a point guard that can, that can defend multiple position, and it's the big man. Uh, big men like Anthony Davis, uh, to me, like if you, if you see some players in the draft over the past year, or the past two years, that kind of like look like Anthony Davis or play the same kind of way. So a big man uh, that's agile and mobile, but as well that he can uh, uh, be like really dominant down low. I would bet on those guys to be like really successful. Uh, mm-hmm. Kent again is saying Kate Cunningham in the 2021 draft is going to uh, remind a lot of people like, okay, yeah, that's for sure. Uh, yeah, that's again like a crafty uh, uh, a guy like Luca. He's yeah, a, a player to watch. But um, if I would have to bet on um, so uh, like a type of player that would uh, um, start to dominate within the system we're in right now, I would say players that kind of like fit the uh, the Anthony Davis archetype pretty much. Because like I don't think that where the league is trending right right now, I don't think that they're trending in the direction where they can de- de- defend that uh, type of player. Yeah. yeah, I don't know what you think. It's a, it's a, it's it's like super far far fetched. Obviously, I'm possibly wrong on a bunch of things right here, but I feel like some some things are are, are, are interesting. I think what a lot of guy teams and a lot of people are looking for right now are guys who are like seven foot, seven foot one, and who can shoot the ball, who can shoot the threes, and who can also maybe be a point guard eventually one day. Uh, we but see that's, Denver. That's Anthony Davis right there. That's him. That's, that's uh, him. We saw Jokic do it with Denver when they remember when they came out with the Big Five. Yeah, with Ball Ball, and he was point guard. No, that was the best thing yeah. ever. Yeah, I, uh, I honestly think we're going back to some sort of not not a big man era, but I think like big men are going to be more important than they were in the past. Um, I think I think a big man will be more important, especially like when you have a guy like Anthony Davis, who or even uh, KD. Katie yeah. himself. Hey. <laughs> he was, uh, he needed to say hello. <laughs> uh, even KD, KD's like seven foot himself, right? And yeah. uh, to defend those guys who can shoot a three pointer from that far out and being seven feet is going to yeah. be tough to shoot, right? So, no, for sure. But I, I would bet on guys like, um, I don't know, I, I like James Wiseman a lot in this year's draft. Um, mm-hmm. I like him playing in a team like uh, like uh, the Warriors, who never quite uh, had someone that that was built like that. It's gonna be interesting to see. I don't know. Like I feel like you need to have guys who can who can take advantage of, advantage of certain positions and like certain situations. And uh, he definitely fits in um, that kind of mold. I don't know. 
What's up, Gio? Well, uh, Gio has a question. How, how about, about players? players? Uh, go ahead, go ahead. Uh, how about players with crazy range? Trey Young, example. Yeah. Um, yeah. There, there's a lot of guys that have crazy range like that. Um, Devontae Graham is one of them. You know how many buzzer beaters that guy hit, like, <laughs> from beyond the three this season, this, uh, this yeah. before the bubble? Uh, Trey Young is another one. Luka Doncic has good range. A lot of guys have good range now. So, Steph Curry. So, well, that's, that's what I'm saying, uh, uh, Joe. So, I feel like the league, uh, uh, most teams actually are, are trying to have, um, again, because like what, what, what Trey takes advantage of is when there's a switch, uh, like a screen happens and then a switch yeah. is a bit late so we can pull up from, from pretty much anywhere because the guy doesn't close enough, right? Uh, yeah, on- and he's quick and he's quick. That's it, and what that's what happens with uh, with Dame as well. Uh, Dame actually is like pretty much the best at that. Um, yeah. Steph Curry is uh, again like he he's gonna do that too this year. That's for sure. Um, but uh, but but the league like the teams are kind of like building uh, themselves to to be able to switch uh, on those guys, and and they, they, they're trying to have like those longer wing players that can uh, defend Kawhi Leonard and Steph Curry at the same time, and and Trey Young at the same time. So um, yeah, they're trying to close in on those guys uh, as much as they can. Uh, so crazy range, obviously it's, um, it's, it's good to have that, but, uh, uh, I feel like the league, uh, the, the, the NBA teams are adapting to that already. Yeah. Um, like it's the NBA has so many ways it can go. Right. Um, it all depends on the talent they get coming to them as well. Right. It all depends what they see in the draft, what they get from their, from their scouts, um, and what, and what they want to do with their game and how they want to change it. Right. Every team, yeah. every team has their own fundamentals. <clears throat> That's one thing I know for a fact, um, uh, like Toronto has one type of fundamentals compared to Miami and vice versa. They have their own playing styles, you yeah. know? Um, so that's a big thing too, right? Fundamentals, uh, team fundamentals. Mm-hmm. That's why right now, uh, what's happening. I don't know if you heard, um, I heard this a while ago. I don't know if it's true or not, but with the NCAA basketball and the G League, what they're trying to do is pretty much try, not trying to get rid of the NCAA, but guys from the NCAA to go to the G League prior. Right, yeah. And play, have like, they already have a team in the G League. It's like, it's all, it's all rookies or something like that. I, I don't know. It was, I can't remember when this was done, uh, but there's like five or six guys or seven guys, young guys. Okay that are trying to, it's like a new tra- system they're trying out instead of drafting from the NCAA from the college that will be from the G league. Now they're yeah, going to well, move that way. Watch. Cause the G league's already there. It's eventually going to move that way. There's a bunch of things that don't work uh, in terms of like, well, uh, especially, yeah, especially with the college, with the, with the college, like they make so much money and the non nonprofit organization, man, it's a little ridiculous. Well, yeah. Like it's the way they did treat the players as well. I mean, like uh, yeah. you can be, uh, uh, your, your scholarship can be like canceled if you get like any sort of uh, uh, what's it called? Uh, like for for example, uh, any sort of sponsorship. And like a, a sponsorship can be like someone can go from someone paying you, uh, giving you a car, or paying you a meal. It's it's like yeah. it's like terrible, like the way there. That's exactly what Ken just, uh, sorry Channing just said. They make make way more money in the G League. That's, that's the it. point. Well, they're, they're if, if these kids stuff. instead of going to NCAA, they're going to go to the G League. At least they'll get paid. It yeah. might not be NBA pay, but at least they'll get paid. In the college, they don't get nothing. Yeah. So it's just a it's just it's just a thing I saw. I just wanted to throw it out there. That's yeah, but like more options for 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 those kids, is, it's always uh, obviously uh, good. I like that they, yeah. they 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 need it's a good way to bring up players. I think in the system. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think kids will skip college. Yeah, I think so too. A lot of them w- w- would skip college. Obviously, uh, it would happen in the past. <laughs> Yeah, it happens for the past, in the past, yeah, for sure. But but I guess like if it's your career, if you, if you're uh, uh, that skilled and and you can make this your career, why not? I mean, come on, like you j- 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 just go ahead and make that. Even money. if I was in the G League making sixty thousand dollars a year, Bogati, Bolin, I could like, I was like I, okay, would, no would, problem. Man. Yeah, you want me to sit yeah. on the bench for sixty thousand? No problem. For sure, for sure. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's um, that's pretty much it for 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 my segment, uh, guys. Any any questions, Chani? I know you have a lot of things on your mind. Usually, uh, <laughs> you have anything for us today? Jenny says they make like f- uh, five six figures in the G League. He believes. 
Yeah, I think so too. Uh, do you will always invest in investing in this stuff from high school? Yeah, that's for sure. No, I, I don't. I don't mind that. I'm 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 always like pro like education and and, and game like get, getting uh, uh, a good uh, scholarship. But um, scroll up. Oh, he made a question. Yeah. So, can you scroll uh, up? I, Nets will be top three if KD and Kyrie are healthy, with supporting case cast of DJ Allen, uh, Dinwiddie, Lavert, Harris, and Shaman Crawford. Uh, uh, yeah. I, I think I think Nets are I think man next year is gonna be Miami uh, I have Nets second yeah Miami then Brooklyn and then Milwaukee I think I don't see Milwaukee being number one next year uh, what in, do the, you think? in the East in the East, in the East. yeah <sighs> Uh, you see Milwaukee or you don't see Milwaukee? I, I don't see them being first. Like, I, I think they're like third or fourth, maybe even. Ooh. Yeah. Uh, in the East, it's tough, man. The East is not, there's like four teams <laughs> or <Yeah>. five teams. <laughs> That's it. Um, That's why I'm rooting for the Hawks. Like, I, I really love, love the Hawks for next year. Yeah. Celtics, Miami Nets. He thinks. Uh, oh, you're right. Celtics. I always forget about the Celtics. Celtics and there's um, Miami yeah, Nets. There's Atlanta. There's Charlotte. There's right. Raptors. So I'd say <laughs> I'd say Miami first. Brooklyn still second, and then uh, I have Celtics third, and uh, Brooklyn uh, not Brooklyn but uh, uh, Milwaukee fourth. I'll okay. take Milwaukee first, and then yeah, Milwaukee first. And um, I will take. It's there's two teams. Uh, you know what? I'll, I'll I will take uh, New Jersey. I'll do with, sorry. With, sorry, we'll do the Nets, Brooklyn Nets, New Jersey Nets, uh, Brooklyn Nets, and and I'm gonna go with the long gun. I'll take what you said, Atlanta as third. Atlanta as third. Oh shit! No, I have them yeah. like. like- Six, seven, maybe like they do. I, I, hey, man, I, I don't know. I, I, if Trey Young continues to play like he did last season, I think yeah. he can go far, especially with the team now. What do you think happens to the Lakers after LeBron's contract is up? Does he retire? Does AD go to the hometown Bulls? Does LeBron Jr. get drafted? Blah, blah, blah. Um, okay, so first of all, uh, I, I, I really, I really thought that Bron- Bronny playing with uh, LeBron was a thing that might happen. Um, I don't see it anymore. Like he's in, he's in a top prospect. I, I don't, I don't think, I don't, even, I don't know if you're following that at all. But like he's, he's in like a bad good of a prospect in high school right now. Like he's in obviously uh, the legend that his dad was, but he was yeah. he's in like top, top twenty, thirty uh, for his age right now. No, I've, I've seen some highlights of his, of his son, but nothing crazy. Right. But um, what what LeBron will do? I don't know. I, I see him staying in LA in LA. Like I, I don't think I, I don't see him retiring after his contract. He still obviously has a lot of fuel in the tank. Uh, mm-hmm. We we've just seen it. Uh, I, I think he resigns uh, with the Lakers for at least an. Yeah, uh, we, we we talked about. Sorry, I'm just reading. I'm just reading some yep. Channing's writing all the questions back. <laughs> uh, yeah, that Tristan Thompson. Yeah, I like Tristan Thompson, Brampton boy. My from my from my town uh kendrick nunn i like kendrick nunn uh we, we discussed about him who is the best two-way player and why i think we discussed that did we discuss that i don't know best two-way player uh i have i have i have and why Giannis number one still um and i'd say i'd say well obviously Kawhi has to be next uh, what do you think, Steven? That's two way player. Say that, say there are two. Say, can you repeat? You said, uh, Giannis and Kawhi. Yeah, those are my top two. I and, would say, I, I'd, I'd have to put like AD right next to Kawhi, like he's pretty much equal to him. Like last yeah. year, last year was no yeah. question, it was Kawhi, yeah, because of the crazy run he had with, with the Raptors. But like this year, is, it's, it's different. Um, oh, we go, uh, do you guys think, uh, do you think Nets will drop? By losing Grant and Pumley, no, I don't. I, me, I think they'll stay, they'll be just fine. Uh, in my uh, opinion, Grant is a big loss, I think, for them. I think uh, Plumley, like, who cares? Uh, he wasn't, uh, he wasn't a factor for them. Uh, Grant was though. Grant was a was a really good player. 
Uh, but good for him if he moved on, though. Like, he, he's going to get his money, money elsewhere, so that's fine. And we have, oh, uh, Debbie Lee, Deb Lee, uh, Stavi Mislite, or Dante DiVincenzo. Uh, what do you think of Dante DiVincenzo? I think he's overhyped. I don't understand it. Like, he was, he was okay during the season for the Bucks yeah. last year. Uh, he was shed during the playoffs, but again, he's a young guy. Um, I don't know what's, what's, uh, what the hype is. I, I, maybe I'm wrong again. Like, I, yeah, I, lo- I love to hate on players for, for no reason. He's one of them. <laughs> Um, uh, and, uh, he also says, "Do you think uh, F- Fred Van Vliet will win? Can win Defensive Player of the Year, the Glove?" No. I think he's, defensive. Uh, he's gonna be. He may. The best he can do is first team all defense. I think. Yeah, I don't think he'll end up. Uh, what happens to the Utah Jazz? Uh man, I don't know. I I loved, <laughs> I love I love the Jazz last year. Like they were really really good. Yeah, uh, they fell apart at the end. But what can you do? They're gonna have some uh some some pressure to build around Mitchell while it's still time. Um, yeah. So I, I see a good future for them. That's for sure. Yeah, and MPJ MPJ time to step it up. I agree with that. Um, I've been investing in him for a while, so I hope he does step it up. Uh, he does look, he had his up and downs, um, in the playoffs. Like he had some good games. Yeah. Uh, his, his select rookie, by the way, his select rookie is, uh, under $20 right now. Oh, is it? Yep. Okay. <laughs> go get a few of those. I just got two. <laughs> oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. There we go, guys. Select rookie MPJ. Yeah. yeah, his his prism his prism. I just sold one uh, of my uh, thing for like forty five dollars, fifty dollars. I think. Yeah, yeah, his prism. His is base prism. Cheap, but uh, no, I have yeah, some MPJ, of it. Of course, uh, I I still think that he kind of like needs to change teams. I don't know why. Like he he's he's okay with. Uh, well, he's okay. He's good with uh, the. Nuggets. Well, he had those comments he said before in the, the playoffs. Remember, he made yeah. some stupid comments that he should. Yeah, have but that, that's again like that's that's. Kids talking pretty much like yeah he's he's a teenager still but I'm no, of I don't know like I I really see him uh, going to a new team where everything is to build and like uh, the team can build around him he definitely can, what, be, can be a star somewhere that's for sure yeah what are the Jazz missing oh oh uh, a good point guard uh, <laughs> Conley is is okay but he never like his best. His best time was was uh, when he was in the NCA. Pretty much, like after that, he wasn't really yeah. impressive. I, I don't think so, at least. Uh, and he, he was he was always like decent. He wasn't he was never bad. But I, I feel like um, uh, the Jazz just needs some some sort of uh, other guy that can take some weight off uh, Mitchell's uh, sh- shoulders. Yeah, they need someone. Well, they have Bogdanovich. Other than that, uh, he, they still need some, they're still missing someone. But Bogdanovich missing... isn't a guy that you give the ball to and he's like, okay, guys, I so get out of No, my he's team. a three point shooter. Right, that's it. So you need yeah. to have like at least another guy like that. I feel. No, of course. Of course. Yes. Uh, Kekosoy, which prism? Uh, I don't know. How much is his, uh, how much is uh, Jokic prism right now? I would have to look that up. Last time I checked was like 60-ish, 70, I think. Jokic? Yep. No, when was that, though? You think it's yeah. less or more? I think it's more. Let me double check right now. Uh, I, won't, I don't think that card – I don't think it's on uh, card ladder. No, you have to look it up on the uh, – what, I'm going on – yeah. Yeah, uh, I would have to. Oh, I'm going on. Um, the other questions. Uh, how do you feel about the new playoff format where the ninth and place? Uh, yeah, that's the the the, the play in uh, format. I love that. I really think it's cool. Like having, because like what what happens is like those those uh, those teams that that know they're gonna end up um, ninth or tenth uh, in the uh, conference. Like usually they kind of uh, stop playing by the end of the season and there's nothing serious going on. And you just make sure that every single team competes uh, 100% right up, up until the end of the season. Yeah. Really cool. And uh, sometimes, especially in the West, what happens is that uh, uh, teams are really close. Like it's always like one loss it, or one win that kind of like changes everything. So having that like playing format is really, really good. I, I think uh, um, I think it's going to make it more comp- competitive, like you said. Uh, having now the ninth and tenth play against each other, I think it's going to make it way more competitive, which is good yeah. for the league and 
I think it's going to be good for the league, to be honest with you. No, for sure. Um, so Jokic, well, right now it's fifty dollars with three days left and fifteen bids on it. How how much? Fifty dollars Canadian with fifty bids on it right now. Fifteen when, bids. When, when does when does it end? Three days. Oh, three days. Oh, wow. Okay, so you might. Yeah, it's to... like a three hundred dollar card, man. Three hundred, three almost. It's almost, uh, Debbie. It's almost around like I would say around three two fifty to three hundred dollars uh, Canadian. His oh. his base prism. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fuck. Okay. Nikola was... Jokic. Yeah, man. He, de- he deserves to be. He his card deserves to be worth that much. I don't know. Maybe maybe I'm not collecting those big guys anyway, so I don't care. Like, look at this one. BGS nine five is. Uh, a rookie Ruby Wave to 350 BGS uh-huh. 95. It's at uh 22 hours left, $263. Nice, yeah. nice. Okay, let me get catch up on those questions a bit. Yeah. Uh, what do you think of Baines and Boucher with reps? Um but Baines is Baines is a is a good serviceable big man. Like he plays well, he's okay. Like you don't expect I like Boucher. I like Boucher. Yeah. But Baines, you don't expect too much out of him, but he doesn't make mistakes and he he's yeah. Uh, always like positioned well so that's good Boucher I love him he's a he's a hometown kid like he's from Montreal uh just love his whole story and like he plays well he always gives 100% when he plays he isn't obviously a star but uh he's he's a good really good player to have on your team Mm -hmm. um just a second just reading the other questions uh do you think the Wizards should do what OKC is doing in story building yeah for sure uh, Wizards have tried the same old thing for like the past what six seven years, almost. Yeah. Um, yeah. They, they, it's about time they 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 should they should. Oh yeah, I, just move on. Yeah. 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 Don't 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 try to trade for a superstar or something. Just trade for picks or young players and, and rebuild. Yeah. OKC is doing well with that. That's that's for sure. Yeah, they're doing very well. <laughs> um, okay that's good Timberwolves the real deal coming up um I'm having trouble with uh the Wolves because they're just so bad at defense like this cash is 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 sucks defensively Russell is pretty much one of the worst defenders in the league uh I don't know how Edwards is gonna do I know I don't know if he's good uh, a good defender um uh, we'll, we'll have to see uh, but but who else do they got? I mean, like they, it's it's they, they can score that's for sure, but they're quite young and they, they don't defend. So and especially like they're they're in the West. So like I don't even see them making the playoffs next year. Well, Timberwolves, no, no, no. You, you uh, took all the words. <laughs> what happens to Bill and Wall? Man, Bill Bill needs to go somewhere else. Uh, what do you think, uh, Stephen? Bill? Yeah. Does he have to go somewhere else? Well, Bill and to... Wall. Oh, I don't know what's going to happen with them. I don't know. Uh, is he? I, I honestly, to be honest with you, I haven't followed what's going on. I know was Wall traded, or I really don't. No, know. no, he asked for a trade. Uh, okay, that I, I remember him saying that there might be a trade for him and Harding, like there might be a switch. Yeah. So, so rumors right now, basically, what what, what they're saying is that uh, John Wall has. Um, asked to be traded but but pretty much like no one said anything from the organization and one was just like yeah whatever Mm -hmm. Um, what i've read as well is that uh wizards got a bunch of calls from other teams um asking uh, inquiring for bradley beal Uh, yeah and wizards are just not responding they're just like yeah no way we're training him so what what i'm what i'm seeing is that they want to keep beal that's for sure and they want to do something with Wall, but no one kind of like knows what's going to happen with him. I, I personally would, would trade both. I, I would just like trade maybe Bill uh, for young guys and then Wall for any sort of picks you can get and like just like get rid of his salary. That's yeah, like- I think they would get something good for those. Uh, the good they would get good draft picks for those two if they weren't able to do well, that. Well, for Bill for sure. Wall, you just want to get rid of his salary, I think. But yeah. Bill, for sure, he's a really, really good player. He's like, yeah. The- he was averaging like almost thirty points a game last year, and he was uh, he wasn't even an all star, so that was like crazy to see. Yeah, uh, but he's a serious like he, he's, uh, yeah, his prime still. Darren Fox is uh, I like Darren Fox. Uh, 
I think I think Sacramento will do good with Darren Fox, healed Bagley. If Bagley stays uh, healthy, hopefully, uh, I think they should be a good contending team. Um, I think they won't make the playoffs though. That's my opinion. no. They're still not good enough, but uh, uh, yeah. they have like a, a bright future. I think. I think, and especially now that Divac isn't there anymore, like Divac wasn't a good GM for them. Yeah. Uh, now I feel like they're uh, building in, a, in an intelligent way. Yeah. Um, what All right. Oh, oh, we got some more. Uh, do you think the Wizards will wait till the season starts and see how they play, or do you think do you package a three-team trade? Ooh, uh, that I'm not gonna answer because <laughs> that that's a tough call. I think. I don't know. Well, to me, it's so you you have something that doesn't work right now with with Wall and Beal. Yeah. And and obviously, like when you have rumors of a guy wanting out, wanting to be traded, it just creates a. a, a a negative environment and on the other end on the other end you have like guys like Danny Evdia and Rui uh, that are young players that you need to invest uh, in and you, you need to surround with uh, a good uh, environment right yeah so I would I would just like get rid of those guys or at least Wall in the beginning of the season maybe keep Beal uh, and then see how he does see how yeah. he does how he works with those guys and then uh, see what happens at the trade deadline. Yeah, that makes uh, sense. I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't keep Wall. It's it's kind of like it's it's over. It's too late. <laughs> yeah, I think it's too late for him right now. Uh, if you can get rid of that salary cap, that would be the best. Yeah, yeah, uh, for sure. because we all we all know it's big. Okay, maybe one last uh, question because it's uh, yeah ten fifteen almost. Yeah, the one last question. Yeah, what do you think happens? Oh, I want to. Oh, next question. I gotta get that one. <laughs> <Before we leave laughs> my next. What do you think happens to the Knicks and can they bring a superstar to the team? Um, okay, so what the Knicks have done this past offseason is really good. Like, I wasn't quite sure about Obi Topping uh, mm -hmm. at first. The more I watch him, the more I watch his, uh, his, uh, his play in the NCAA, the more I like him. Yeah. Um, I think they still need to get rid of um, Randall. Um, and they'll have like something interesting, something like more intelligent than they that they that they had last year, for sure. Uh, in terms of bringing a, a new another star to the team, I don't think it's going to happen um, soon. Maybe, maybe if they do well like this year, and if people start as start to see them as a serious organization, um, maybe then yes. But but not. Uh, I don't see like anyone like maybe like. Until two years, two years from now, like making the move to the Knicks, like seriously, like some some big big time star, you know? Yeah, um, yeah. I I would say another year or two before they sign somebody. Yeah, yeah. They can still trade though. Like they have a, a couple of decent assets. Uh, <laughs> Thanks, Channing. Channing. No problem. <laughs> That's a lot of questions. <laughs> yes. But uh, yeah, I think we're gonna wrap this up here, uh, guys. If you don't mind. Um, yeah so again thank you guys for tuning in man thank you guys for tuning in uh if you have like any suggestions of uh topics you want us to uh discuss ideas whatever please let us know uh you can uh private message steven uh, and myself whenever you yeah. want and, uh, uh and yeah. this this will this will be uploaded after onto uh, on, on our youtube channel guys mm -hmm. so if anyone missed out you're more than welcome to rewatch it on there uh thanks Channing. appreciate it peace out brother uh yeah, but don't forget don't forget break number 45 is still <laughs> basketball break number 45 guys let's get it you filled. still have like a couple of uh i don't know like uh, days maybe to 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 fill it before uh me and steven just like break into our faces and we play. <laughs> yeah and then we pull a zion one of one all right okay thank guys you so much always nice to see you. good night buddy. all right peace guys yeah. Peace, yeah. guys. Later.